So I'm going to do a teardown on this must tool NDS 2112P 100MHz oscilloscope. Now I featured this previously in a review video and I thought I'd do a little follow up, pull the thing apart and have a look at it. So one of the things I want to look at here is that I'm currently feeding in a pretty accurate 10 MHz signal and it's slightly off here, not by much, only you know, six counts, but it's slightly off. And I want you wonder if there's a way of improving that, maybe chuck a TCXO in it or something like that, maybe, I don't know, who knows. But we'll have a look and see if we can find the reference for this thing inside it. And it'd be nice if I can get this exactly right. Um, it's not too critical, but this might be a good scope for my RF bench because it's quite a fast little scope. You can actually see it on this, so if I turn the modulation back on again, you can see it's 10 megahertz here, so if I go bring it back down, there is the AM modulation, right there. So it can even do that. So that is brilliant. Not every scope can do this, it's quite a big test for it, and this is actually doing it fairly easily. Once I've figured out the settings to get it to work on this particular scope, it's doing it easily. Because of that, I actually like to get this frequency counter working more accurately, because now I could use this as a reference scope in my RF lab. So anyway, let's pull it apart. So it looks like it's very similar to any, well, many other scopes. We just have a couple of screws on the bottom here by the feet. So four screws in, there's a couple of screws up the top of the handle as well, so we'll get these out. These are actually inserted screws, there's some metal inserts in there, which is nice. Shows a little bit of quality actually, it's quite good. Prefer metal inserts rather than just straight into the plastic, they're just slightly nicer. And then we've got a couple of screws up here behind the handle as well, which is like to drop the handle down slightly. And we we'll get into these. Also, metal inserts, but a few of it. Now, oh, we've got to get that, we'll tip it down more so I can get the screw out. Okay, here's one. Looks like all the screws are the same. Get to this one, and then hopefully that'll be all there is, and then get the thing out. I think that might be it. It seems to just be spinning in place. Here we go. Right. Put the back off. There we go. It's surprisingly empty. <laughs> okay, so you got to be front end stuff in here because that's the B and C's there come in. So this is the cover for the input side. So there's adjustments here, obviously for the compensation and stuff like that on it. It's actually got a bent cover here. Shouldn't really matter. Nice earth coming to the chassis here. We've got a flex coming through obviously from the display which has got some shielding on it. A couple of caps here. I don't know what these are. I don't know. Can't make it sense of what the name is. What, what do you reckon that is? That name. Can you see it? Chimic. Is it Chimic? 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 I don't know. Hmm. So let's have a closer look shall we? So let's start the power supply. Nice little bolt-in power supply. 5.5 volt rail dual wires coming through. So 5.5 volts coming in. So that's a 5 volt supply. Really simple. Brands ice was it AC? AC brand? I've seen those in other things as well. I think I've seen those in Siglins actually. Yeah, these are the same. So it's obviously a the shelf kind of module and they've probably just shoved it in there, I'm guessing, I don't know. Mate, I could be built to order. Um, so at least it does actually have a proper earth coming through to the main chassis here, which is also getting going straight to the BNCs. So these are putting a bit of heat. I can actually feel heat on the top of the case when I was using this thing. It was above this area. So also the heat from these is um, coming through. There is no fan, so it's silent. No fan is a good thing and a bad thing. Silent, but also means that you get a bit of a heat build up, potentially. Yeah, it's still warm. I've had this thing off for about five minutes now. And it's still a bit warm there. So maybe it would benefit from having a small fan put in there. Maybe you could stick a little five volt fan there maybe and just have it blowing through. Just something really small and quiet. Certainly possible. So what we've got here is fast chips, guys. So you've got some Samsung memory. Uh, system, yeah, I'm not sure. Don't know what that is, don't know what it says. I should have looked these up actually so I can find out what they are. It's probably a flash or something. This is like some kind of processor. Obviously you've got some main processing under here. That's probably a power supply section or some kind. Not quite sure what that is. There you go. Makes sense? I don't know. AZ1117 is it? Is that a MOSFET? I think it might be actually. So this chip here is an AM3352 B Z C Z three zero. Get that? And this board here might be too interesting. This is just the keyboard section and the encoders and stuff like that. So the source is coming through this little ribbon over here into the side. 
this is probably acquisition and um, sampling over here my guess bearing firmware etc over here it's surprisingly simple well empty surprisingly empty really it's not simple because I don't understand it but yeah it's yeah simple yeah so you can actually see from over here it's actually a fairly new design this is August 2018 so it's only two years old this design so this is actually I think why it's performing quite well compared to the other uh, low-end scopes I've been trialing because it's actually a newer design and it's obviously been refined somewhat and it's working quite nicely so it's pretty impressive actually We've got some headers lying around probably some programming headers and UART stuff like that I've got no idea down here we've got some power supply I should point this out we've got some MOSFETs down here some obviously some smoothing caps and some other discrete stuff over here so we've got some inductors and stuff so it's probably some booster converters over here maybe as well to generate various supplies for the rest of the circuitry so this processor here is apparently a ARM Cortex A8 processor by Texas Instruments, as you can see the logo in anyway, and it's apparently it could actually be up to one gigahertz speed. So that's impressive. I mean, it could be anywhere, sort of 600 to one gigahertz or so. Apparently, it could be anywhere in that range. Um, I don't know how to identify that in particular chip here with the configuration, but. I think it depends on the voltages supplied to it and stuff like that as well. Some kind of configuration options you can change it, I think. But I think it's up to 1 gigahertz, so it's a fairly speedy little thing. So I thought I'd pop this guard off here over the back of the input section and see if we can see anything interesting in there. I thought, why not? Got plenty of time to play with in the video, so let's pop it open. Let's try and lift up each side like this, heat this up, and hopefully it takes two sides off and that should be enough. With a bit of luck. We shall see how we go. I might have put some fresh solder on it to make it pop off, but we'll give it a try like this. That's kind of wanting to go, but not. Got to do it in two places, it would seem. So I've got to do it over here as well. Is that side off? We'll try this one again. Over here. Here we go, now it's lifting. Alright, so that's those off. And I think. There's two more over this side. I might just bend it up. Let's see how we go. Let's just bend it up. Should be fine. What could go wrong? And there's the input section. It's not too bad of you, I suppose. So there's the BNCs coming in over here. And basically parallel designs versus this one. They're not exactly the same. So let's start with different orientations over here of the circuitry. So over here it's a little bit different. So it's not the same layout exactly, so you see it's similar. But here you've got this capacitor going off, obviously DC blocking and stuff like that over there. And then this one goes this way. And then there's obviously interesting layout just here, which comes up. Looks like there's a footprint which isn't used. Maybe it's 50 ohm impedance. Sorry, 50 ohm impedance option or something like that, I don't know. But it's obviously not there. It's like a relay footprint which isn't populated. There are other bits which aren't populated in there, not surprising. Maybe it's used for um, the 200 megahertz version or a different version of this unit, high bandwidth or something. But otherwise, once you get past there, they look very similar each side. Obviously the layouts are different though, so these two channels aren't going to be identical because the layouts have differences. Try to get in focus at the same time. Sorry about the lighting, it's easy to get this with this shield like this. Should have taken it off, really, shouldn't I? Anyway, there you go. Maybe it'll be useful to someone one day, seeing a close-up of what this is. Maybe. Yeah. Better lighting. That's as good as I can do. Right. Cool. Done. Done did. Right. Let's put this thing back together, and hopefully it all still works. I've already resoldered the can back on, and. Um, get this back in place like this kind of it doesn't quite want to drop on why doesn't it want to drop on there we go right all very nice it's actually not a bad unit actually i'm actually surprised it looks like it's well constructed I mean, there's a bit of flux residue on that other board there you know that's not cleaned off properly but the other board main logic board was fine it's it looks right
give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Check the videos out at the end here, the playlist for teardowns and reviews and stuff like that. If you want to check out my other videos, and um, if you've not really been here before, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified about new videos as I post them. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, potentially winning a scope, probably won't be this one, but one of the other ones I have which I've done reviews on, check out the playlist for the other ones I've done, which are not Siglent scopes, the Unity and the Handtech, and the other scopes I've done to this point, which I'm considering giving away one or the other, maybe both, don't know, but it'd be to a Patreon, so if you're interested in that, you want to improve your chances by actually becoming a Patreon, because your chances are zero if you're not one, then consider doing that, and we'll see how we go, I expect I will do a giveaway, but this is a nice little scope, I'm very, very happy with it, it's worth well, and I recommend you go and buy one if you think about it, if you don't want to become a Patreon that is, so, thanks a lot, bang good for sending that to me at no cost, as I said before, thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.